This is part three of the, let me roll this down here, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Part three of the sex and gender asteroids in astrology. These are some of the most fascinating asteroids that you can possibly run into because they're all about power. They're not necessarily about uh, who you date and who you jump in the bed with. They're all about how you assert your will on other people and how you receive other people's assertion. At least that's how astrology views it. In these last couple of recordings before this third one, I talked about how there are asteroids indicating your physical biology. There are asteroids indicating your preference for other people's physical biologies. There are asteroids indicating how you like power to be used on you, trained against physical biology. There are asteroids for how you use power on others, trained against physical biology, and there are asteroids for how many parties you tend to commit to at once when you're doing all this. Now, oh, and then I also talked about what to look for in the chart. Those asteroids, all the ones I listed on the previous slides, if you look for contacts to these folks in particular, really these top five, then uh, you'll be able to explain quite a few things in the chart. Also, Vertex and Saturn are really important. Everybody else is secondary. Okay, let's look at a couple of sample charts. So here's a sample chart of a person. And, and what I recommend when you're looking at people's uh, sex and gender and, um, you know, how to get their lives right. Uh, so, so by the way, let me, let me just digress a little bit. I like studying this kind of stuff because uh, I, you know, I find that, that when you look at people through the lens of psychology, one of the, the, the things that really dogs folks is how to go out there, how to put themselves out there, put their dreams out there, put their goals out there, put their wishes out there to their partners, to their family, to their friends. It's all about assertion. You've got a world out there that says, hey, uh, you know, be happy, be pretty, be strong, be rich. And we've got certain attitudes towards those things. But uh, whether or not we can actually play them out or play them out safely or declare them to a group of people who will support us is it's totally a reflection of your support system and your power dynamics with other people. When you study sexology, you're not just studying um, dating. You're studying how safe it is for people to go out there and be themselves or uh, be who they think they are or to attract things that they actually like versus what they're trained and everything. So this is a really, really deep subject. As you can tell by the previous asteroids, there are lots of dimensions to it. Uh, I, I tended to think before I started studying the thousand asteroids that there might be just one indicator of masculinity or femininity, but no, not really. There are actually at least like 30 or 40 in the first thousand, and that's what you get when you have a sky full of asteroids. But now, when you're starting to read, oh, oh, and also, remember, you cannot look at somebody's chart and tell anything about how they identify or what their, their form is, whether they're male or female. Really, this stuff is best used when you know a little bit already about them. If you know a little bit about their assertion structure, their masculinity and femininity, then you can learn a whole lot from this chart after you know a little bit. But if you know nothing, you can conclude nothing. Okay, so when I start off, I like to know whether or not the, uh, the individual is basically masculine or feminine. So uh, my four asteroids for that were Camellia, Cressida, Lola, and Gudula. So let's look for Camellia. Okay, this one has Camellia type caretakers there. That doesn't mean anything because it's just series. Cressida, where's Cressida? Uh, oh, it commits right here. Commit, commitment to Cressida. Uh, so, so this individual tends to publicly commit more to women. That's one of the things that you can see. Now, Juno is actually one of our asteroids, but uh, it's an important one, so we're going to read that. How about Lola and Gudula? Okay, Gudula, Rebellion, mm, I don't know. It's, uh, it's near Rebellion here, Lilith. And Gudula is all about awkward causing impression. And so if uh, this individual has friends who are more in the androgynous 
state, more in the androgynous identification, those friends may be more likely to be rebels. That's what happens when you got this conjunct here. But other than that, uh, you know, you really, really know. So, and then you've got Lola. This individual, uh, yeah, it's kind of near the node, kind of not. Okay, so what I would say is that whatever this, in, whoever this individual is, are more likely to commit to women. Can you tell that they're they're male or female or anything like that? Uh, of course not, of course not. But I would tell you that this individual is is male. Okay, uh, I, I I could go through all twenty, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm just going to show you how to how to glance at a chart like this, and and uh, given the list of stuff on the previous slide, kind of eyeball what's going on. We're looking for major contacts. By the way, everything in this chart is something you should have in the chart except for except for maybe you know Pluto and Neptune nobody really cares about those guys but up to Uranus uh, including Chiron and Vesta here everything I have displayed here uh, is, is, is useful for reading the individual's gender and sexuality what stands out is that this individual tends to go out into the world under Lutetia and Lutetia was being comfortable in their own skin. So this, this guy's in, he, he's, he's really comfortable with himself. When he goes out, he tends to commit to women. Uh, we've got Lola next to Eduarda. And uh, we've got the part of fortune on Hera. This person is comfortable bonding. He likes forming bonds. And Eduarda, by the way, as I said, is the actual gay asteroid. It's, uh, it's associated with homosexual males and Lola is uh, interacting with people's fantasies and so the gay males in this person's circle uh, tend to be I guess popular in some way and they may f they may actually have a kind of role that this this person is comfortable with so we wouldn't be surprised if this individual had a prominent gay male friend uh, I don't see anything else because Jupiter tends to be unimportant relatively. The Imam Coli, that's not major. Uh, Veronica, here's here's something here. Veronica is associated with sexy and sex focused women, masculine preferring, but it's near Saturn. And what this suggests is that maybe the stereotypical uh, girly trained girl who says, you better be a man, is. Uh, in some way either restrictive or offensive to this individual. And I can tell you from knowing who this person is, uh, this is true. This is, this is true. He had he had hard times. This is not my chart, by the way. This is, this is some other dude's chart. But uh, uh, yeah, he, he had a hard time with this kind of personality. Uh, there's Dyke here. This is feminine-feminine interactions. It's not necessarily lesbianism, although it can be associated with it. And uh, But there, there tends to be in the feminine feminine interaction a kind of training and teaching um, identification there. You also have Venus. Let me click this other thing here. It's a little bit distracting. Okay, so you also have Venus. Now I told you to look at Venus for for basic communication, and uh, here we see that Venus is uh, Dyke's kind of far. It's it's five degrees, so you wouldn't really expect this this person to communicate as strongly with feminine feminine interactions. Uh, Georgia, if you recall, Georgia had no particular preference for your your uh, yeah, it's, I, I keep clicking over here because I've got a cheat sheet on the side to remind me of where everybody is. Georgia was nurturing others creative impulse and uh, it, it didn't really have much of a preference for who it interacted with and we can see right here Mercury is on Georgia. So this person uh, is, is pretty egalitarian in terms of the power dynamics he interacts with. But if you look at this, uh, here's something interesting. He's got McDonald on Pallas. And that basically says that he doesn't care who he interacts with, but he rather, but he insists that you have some kind of. Uh, polarity, some kind of creative or sexual polarity. Uh, from experience, this is not sexual, it's actually creative. And 
it's it's declared to the world as part of this individual's reputation it's also next to Rebecca so interestingly this this person he's he's associated with a kind of uh, creative or sexual liberation but he stands alone in doing it and so there's a there's a uh, an extent to which he may be the center of his circle for these efforts. Uh, he's, again, comfortable being himself because there's Nali and there's the sun, just like Lutetia, Lut Lutetia and Ascendant. And that's it. That's all we get from this individual. What can we say about his sexuality? He prefers women. He's a liberator. He's comfortable with himself. He's probably pretty popular. He's all right with, with uh, and, and actually made more comfortable with... Uh, gay male friends and that's that's all I get that's all I get from just glancing at this thing but uh he might be pretty smooth he's pretty smooth with people in general okay let's read another chart this is the last one I'm going to read uh, I am going to glance at this one and just look for some major stuff so first of all this one proceeds forward with softened masculinity this is the chart of a woman, by the way. Um, and so she's, she's, she either proceeds forward with softened masculinity or she prefers softened masculinity to proceed forward with her. The latter is actually true. Uh, let's, let's take a look at how she declares, though. We've got, looks like Venus and Lola. So interacting with people's fantasies, we have... Mercury and Bacchus and Vertex, but no real asteroids with Mercury. So let's keep going. Th this person is destined to draw female camaraderie and a lot of information around her with female camaraderie uh, because she's got Rosina here. Uh, oh, this is interesting. So Eros is being turned on, and Saturn is restriction, and Juno is commitment. And what that means is that you might expect this person to have a problem with uh, expressing where they're turned on, or a problem with their commitment. And again, from experience, this is, this is true. Uh, this person is comfortable with heteronormativity. Uh, they're comfortable with heteronormativity. They they proceed with softened masculinity. They have a kind of problem here expressing where they're turned on. They communicate by interacting with people's fantasies. And this is a bit odd. This is a bit odd as a combination because um, really what makes it odd, maybe you can't tell, but it's, it's actually something I already talked about. What makes it odd is that on the one hand, you're comfortable with heteronormativity. On the other hand, you go out with uh, softened masculinity and isolation to protect your greatness here and trouble being committed. And so uh, there's, a, there's an air of, of uh, oh, and then there's also palace, declaring to the world and having life change associated with it, um, there, there's, there's an air of not necessarily being comfortable with oneself. I say don't look at Pluto, but here we are right here. Pluto, for social pressure, is right next to Julia. And so there's the pressure to have only masculine forwardness allowed, and this is very strong in this person's chart. But there's also Nausicaa. Nausicaa is open to pretty much pretty much anything right it's pansexual uh, so there's an openness to anything and there's a comfort comfort with one's skin when they are open to anything but there's the pressure to only allow masculine forwardness uh, and then furthermore there's awkwardness gudula drawn out by the imam coli here with mcdonald up and McDonald is sexual extroversion. So you've got sexual extroversion drawn out alongside awkwardness. And you've got a focus, that's Vesta, alongside Georgia, which is uh, 
again, it's, th this is weird. Oh, man, and then you've got Jupiter for public image next to Chimera. And I told you that Chimera was, I'm not going to say Chimera is bad, but Chimera is, is pretty close to bad. This is the chart. One more, one more here before I summarize. Uh, she's got a reputation for masculine paralyzing feminine tactics. So she's she's female. She seems and see again, you, you couldn't tell she was female because this chart suggests that uh, if she is female, she may have some trouble with with expressing comfortably sexually. Uh, you also have Nanina being turned on uh, by males, power males, but also Dyke for feminine feminine interactions, so being turned on by that too. This is totally the chart of uh, someone who is inclined towards sexual uh, conflict, internal conflict with themselves. I know this is true from, from experience and uh, experience with this person, but this is how you read it. Before I get off of this chart, let me just tell you what the point of all this is. So. Let's say you only know a little bit about a person's sexuality. If you, if you know only a little bit about the person's sexuality, uh, then you can read these asteroids, provided you have their birth time, of course, um, and you can, you can tell how they interact with people, and uh, you can tell how to, how to get at fixing any problems that they have, not any problems, but a lot of problems that they have, and you can also see how they really process some of the murky areas. You, if, if you want to know, man, what, what does this individual think of gay folks? What does this individual think of polyamory? Well, I mean, you can look. You can look. Uh, let's find Eduarda. What do they think of gay folks right here? Uh, Eduarda, Armor, and Diotima are all right next to this illusion here. So uh, it might be a kind of spiritual help. But in the bad sense, it might be a source of confusion about how all this works, about how poly works. Uh, I say poly. Diatema is not necessarily polyamory, but I, I just, you know, I threw it in there. Anyway, but all these guys are associated with a kind of cloudiness because they're near Neptune, and they're also associated with a lot of, a lot of noise. If you wanted this person to, to kind of move on the road to, to becoming comfortable with themselves, this area here with Lutetia, and vertex is important. Lutetia, palace, and vertex. This is the key to fixing this individual if they're broken. If they're not broken, then they can change other people's lives by teaching them to be comfortable with themselves as well. This is the key. Seeing where the vertex is, seeing where the Saturn is, will show you where the change is and where the problems are in this person handling their own power and it's not just sexuality. So you can use these asteroids to determine how to solve a lot of your dynamic problems with not just your boyfriends and girlfriends, but with people in general. Okay, that's it for the sex asteroids. Uh, it's a pretty cool topic, pretty interesting topic. If you want to know more, you can check out my books on Amazon. I have four of them, at least there will be four of them in May. Here they are. Those of you interested in regular astrology may check out my first book, Full Spectrum Astrology. It's green. So it's, it's, uh, all my books are technical, but, but this one is the least technical. But if you could only get one of the four, I recommend Hayden's Book of Sinistry. It's for relationships. It's uh, pretty thorough. It's got all kinds of tables. And for advanced folks, we have the other guys. All 144 incoming soon. Laurentia. That's it. Uh, yeah. Sex and Gender Asteroids. Uh, check it out in your own chart.